Let's talk about the 20% rule. So what is the 20% rule? The 20% rule is a weight limit that is determined by a number of different factors. From the healthy weight of a horse, the height of a rider, the size of your horse, the total weight of their tack, the workload of the horse, the age of the horse and the rider's ability. It is therefore a general rule that ensures a horse's welfare. It is so important that we promote personal health and well-being for all of the horses in our care. The 20% refers to 20% of the ideal body weight of a horse. That 20% corresponds to the amount of weight that that horse can carry, including its tack. It's actually quite simple to work out the 20% that your horse can carry. All you have to do is start off with its ideal body weight let's say in this case it's 500 kilograms and then all we have to do is divide that 500 kilograms by five and we end up with 100 kilograms so 20 percent of the horse's ideal weight is 100 kilograms therefore the maximum weight that horse can carry including its tack and any clothes and additional equipment cannot exceed 100 kilograms so basically, if your horse is 455 kilograms at their ideal weight, then 20% of that is around 91 kilograms. So if you and your tack combined weigh more than that, I'm afraid that's too heavy. To get the ideal weight of your horse, you can use a weight tape or a weigh bridge. I prefer to just use a weight tape and all you need to do then is divide that number by five and that will give you the ideal 20% weight that your horse can carry. Obviously, it's always nice to be under that weight if possible. The 20% rule is a recommendation by the Certified Horsemanship Association and the US Cavalry Manuals of Horse Management, which were published in 1920. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking. Can I really take into consideration something that was put forward all those years ago, over 100 years ago? Well, I'm here to say yes. You see, research has found that an average adult light riding horse could comfortably carry about 20% of their ideal body weight. Now, when I say ideal body weight, I mean the weight that they should be the perfect weight when they have no fat rolls and their tuck fits beautifully and they look all in proportion not 20 percent of a body weight where you've fed them as much as you could feed them and they've been on long grass all over the summer and they're suddenly ballooning like a whale no not that 20 percent in 2008, an Ohio University did a lot of research evaluating the impact of the weight of a rider plus their tack. You see, the 20% rule doesn't just apply to you, it also applies to your tack, your saddlecloths, your stirrups, bridles, any fancy little hats you might be putting on them anything boots anything it all adds up to be part of the 20 percent weight so the university monitored a horse's heart rate their body temperature their breathing rate and also their core muscle condition while carrying loads of 15 20 25 and 35 percent of their ideal body weight and they found that just as in 1920 when the original cavalry produced this guideline that 20 percent was in fact the ideal weight for a horse or pony to carry other things do have to be taken into consideration such as confirmation fitness and overall balance of your horse obviously the older they are the better their balance is 
the duration and the intensity of the work that they are doing and also the equipment that you're using and their hoof care and hoof condition. So, confirmation. Research found that the circumference of the cannon bone related directly to the weight carrying capacity of that horse. Horses with wider loins and greater cannon bone circumference had less muscle soreness as their weight load increased. This indicated that the 20% rule was a good starting point. Another study looked at endurance horses such as thoroughbreds and Arabians and they were carrying between 20 and 30% of their ideal body weight. They found that lameness was much more common in horses that did have smaller cannon bones and much smaller loin muscles. They then compared this data to the Icelandic horses which are obviously a lot more compact, they're much stronger set, much thicker set, thicker cannon bones and they do tend to carry more weight. We do often see Icelandic horses depicted carrying adult riders who are quite large compared to their very small stature but again researchers found that Icelandic horses carrying between 20 and 35% of their body weight was fine for them short term but their ideal workload and body weight load hit around 23%. So fitness and balance. It's not just about your horse's fitness, it's also about your fitness as a rider. And the research found that the balance of the rider made a huge impact on the weight carrying capacity of the horse. As well as this, unfit and unbalanced horses didn't have the strength and the appropriate lift that they needed in their back to support the weight of the rider while maintaining their own balance. They simply could not keep the balance of themselves and of their rider with them both being overweight. The research also found that horses with a much better top line could tolerate an increased workload and this did lead to signs of reduced muscle soreness. So an unfit rider can also throw their horses balance and make their back sore. I know this is probably preaching to the converted for many of you, but it's always good to get this information out there so that it's fresh in our minds. Next was duration and intensity of the workload. Research found that activities that were over rough terrain or much longer distances really did increase the effort needed to be performed by the horse. Horses that were holding extra weight found that the rough terrain really did have a marked effect on their muscle soreness and their ability to adapt to the different terrains. So it's recommended that you should only attempt this kind of activity if your horse and you as a rider are fit enough to do so. So last is equipment and hoof care. You should always make sure that your equipment is suitable for purpose and it meets all the needs of the activity you are about to embark on. You need to make sure that your tack fits, that your saddle is really comfortable and is a perfect fit for your horse's back. It needs to really distribute that weight, the weight of the saddle and the weight of you, the rider. Saddles should never cause any pinching and should never cause muscle soreness. If you think that your horse may be suffering from any of these ailments, then please call out a proper certified massage therapist or chiropractor to come and have a look at that horse. You also need to really provide the best routine hoof care that you possibly can. Remember, no foot equals no horse. Hooves should always be regularly trimmed to ensure a balanced and really nice flat surface for weight bearing. Horses that do wear down their feet a lot quicker than they can grow them really do need proper fitted shoes. But remember, 
horseshoes do weigh quite a considerable amount if you're someone who's not too into shoes then equine boots are a really good substitute as long as they have been looked at and fitted by a professional and you can always ask your farrier to have a look at that when they come to give them a trim so thank you so much for watching this little video and hopefully it explains a little bit about the 20% rule and how sometimes mm, we can go over a couple of kilograms but only if your confirmation, balance, fitness, hoof care, all of this is adhered to. But if you can, try and stick under that 20% rule. If you've liked this video, why not give it a like and subscribe to our channel so that you can see more like this. Thank you for watching and goodbye.